Hi, my name's Nikolai, aka 56 Miner, and today we're unboxing our February Premium Box. This month's box is all about one of my favorite mediums, charcoal. We'll go over the materials, talk about how to use them, and I'll share some tips and tricks that I picked up while working with everything. Let's get into it. For our surface this month, we have a custom toned paper pad from the Fabriano Company in the color C. This paper is great for a variety of dry mediums and perfect for the charcoals in this month's box. Our next item is going to be a 7-piece charcoal sketching set from the Faber-Castell Company. This is a great set to explore charcoal as it includes some vine charcoal, a blending stump, and a variety of different charcoal pencils. And to sharpen our pencil, we have the Grip Trio Sharpener from Faber-Castell. This is a great sharpener for on the go as it has two compartments to contain your shavings. Starting with our medium charcoal pencil, I'm going to explore our materials by sketching a picture. Our medium charcoal pencil is going to give us lighter lines and allow us to create more distinct edges, where our soft charcoal is going to be a lot darker, but those edges are going to be just as soft as that charcoal. I'm going to focus on using that soft charcoal on my darkest areas, following up with our blending stem to smooth out that value and create the illusion of form. Charcoal as a medium is pretty messy, so we're not going to get those clean lines like from a mechanical pencil, but what we'll gain is a lot more life and vitality out of whatever we're drawing. Now if your surface does get messy, we can always go in with that kneaded eraser and clean it up a bit. We can push our illusion of form even further by adding some highlights with our white pencil. Vine charcoal is one of my favorite things to sketch with, as you can go in really rough and loose but buff out those lines with just your finger. Charcoal as a whole is a great medium to render form and value, so this month I'm going to do a small study of a sphere with a cast shadow, utilizing the wide side of that charcoal, that way it can fill in this larger area quicker. Using just my finger, I'll buff out that background, and this will help to not only push our sphere forward, but also our foreground. Now, vine charcoal's greatest strength and weakness is just how delicate it is. It allows us to create some really beautiful, subtle values, but it won't stick to the page nearly as much as traditional charcoal. Pinching off a small piece of our kneaded eraser, we can take advantage of vine charcoal's delicate nature and clean up our edges and lines. And if you want to protect your drawing for storage, there are spray fixatives out there that can seal the charcoal to the paper or you can use hairspray in a pinch, just make sure you test it first. Our next item is going to be the Chunky Charcoal from the Savant Fair Company. This charcoal is going to be the darkest value in our entire box, so I'm going to use it to push that background even further into the distance. And I always love charcoal because it's kind of messy, but it's ultimately a very forgiving medium. You don't need to be that precise because the charcoal is really working with you. And once we get a good amount of charcoal on our blending stump, we can actually use this as a drawing tool. Let's grab the next item in our box, the Holbin Soft Pastel and Blue Gray 3. Bringing back our sphere drawing, we can use the Holbin Soft Pastel to help differentiate that sphere from the background and foreground. The Soft Pastel in this box allows us to create a larger value range, which will help us to attribute form. By bringing in our white pencil and our medium charcoal pencil, we can push our values even further, which helps to reinforce the realism of what we're depicting. Let's grab the next item in our box, a Prismacolor colored pencil in white. This pencil is great for sketching out your initial concept and working on composition, as it really stands off of our C-toned paper. Here, I'm using it to establish where I'm going to put a few flowers coming out of my picture. Next, I'll use our medium charcoal pencil in order to add some stems and some leaves to our flowers, using the blending stump to kind of soften that black, but still going back in with that charcoal to build up value. Let's grab the final item in this month's box, the Pitt Harness Brush Pen in white from the Faber-Castell Company. This brush pen comes with a very flexible nib that allows us to achieve both thin and thick lines, and goes over our color pencil perfectly. I love the sharp contrast that this pen offers against our blue paper, and we can increase that white by layering our pigment. Now that we have a good understanding of our materials, let's take what we learned and do something a bit more complex. I'm going to take some inspiration from our prompt this month, 
and go through the process of creating a glow effect. I'll start by sketching in a cylinder with our Prismacolor color pencil, and then use our pit brush pen to build up that value. Now if you plan on using the charcoal on top of the color pencil, make sure to go in with a light hand as that wax can make the charcoal resist off our paper. I'm going to be using the flame of my candle in order to cast that glow effect, but you could really use this technique with any subject. Once I'm happy with my candle, I'm going to go in with our color pencil again, just to fill in any areas that I left untouched, and add a little bit of a texture effect. Taking our white charcoal pencil, I'll go in and sketch in that flame, getting the overall shape down before emphasizing the innermost part. It's typical for a light source to be the brightest at the center, as light expands out and gets kind of weaker and darker as it expands. Now there is an entire school of thought dedicated to this, but it's a bit more light physics than we need, so for our purposes, we just need to know that the farther we're getting away from that flame, the less light there will be. Using a clean side of our blending stump, I'll go and blend out that first layer, just allowing for a very smooth and subtle transition. Next I'll take our Holbein pastel and I'll focus on areas of where the white transitions into the blue of our paper. Notice that I'm leaving a little bit of a border around that flame, and that's just to help increase the contrast between the fire and the casted light. With that first layer down, I'll go back in with my white charcoal pencil and use some bending lines to really push the contrast of that cast light, as well as increase the sharpness of the contrast on the flame itself. With the flame being our light source, we need to make sure that it's lighter than any light that it casts off. Using our kneaded eraser, I'll go in and clean up some edges, as well as add a wick with our vine charcoal and emphasize the embers with our pit brush pen. Now at this point, it kind of looks like our candle is in a fairly well-lit room, so we can increase that contrast and make it look like it's in a dark room by using our vine charcoal in order to make a soft vignette. I'll blend out our vine charcoal with my finger just to make a soft transition, and then go back in with our Holbein pastel to re-emphasize that light. Sometimes when things are overly smooth and blended, they lose a little bit of their vitality, so by adding in some hard edges, we can bring back some of that character. So at this point, our candle starts to look like it's in an environment that's fairly dark, but we can push that even further by using our chunky charcoal to really pump up those blacks. This will create the illusion that our candle is in a more pitch black environment. And as we increase the contrast of our shadows, I'm going to go back in and re-emphasize our brightest points. That way we have a really strong and dynamic contrast between the two. And with that, our video is complete. Hope you enjoyed it, learned a few things, and if you post your work online, make sure you use hashtag SketchboxFebruary. We love seeing what y'all create each month. And if you want to check out any of our previous videos, head over to our YouTube channel where you can like and subscribe. And I'll see you next month.